knuckles and duck under the orange ones. Ready, set, go! I, 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 I will follow you, God. I, 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 I will live for you. I, 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 I will keep pressing on until I have reached the prize. Guys, uh, welcome to Daddy Dar Discussions. We're so glad to have you here. I'm Pastor Steve. Joined with me is my lovely daughter, Olivia. Hi. <laughs> here we learn more about God, each other, and being the best you that you can be. Stay tuned for today's Bible story. Oh. 
on a long journey. He gathered his servants together and gave careful instructions on what to do while he was away. I will be leaving you shortly and may not return for quite some time, he explained to them. I am putting you in charge of my wealth so that my estate will continue to prosper even while I am away. So the master divided his wealth among his servants based on each one's ability to manage it. The first servant was given five talents. Each talent was equal to thousands of dollars. This servant took the sum of money given to him and he immediately went to work using what he was given to make more money. He knew this would please the master. His efforts produced five more talents. The second servant was given two talents. Not as much as was given the first servant, but still a great deal of money. This servant took what was given to him and, like the first servant, dutifully invested it to make more money. He too knew this would please the master. His efforts produced two more talents. The third servant was given one talent, less than the other servants, but still a good amount of money. This servant failed to see the value in the opportunity that the master had given him, and fearing any risk to it, promptly went out and dug a hole and buried it in the ground. Many days, weeks, and months passed, and finally the master returned. Eager to find out the condition of his property and wealth, he called his servants together to hear what they had done with what he had given them to manage. Each servant approached the master to give their report. The first two servants proudly showed their master that they had doubled what he had given them. The master smiled. Well done, my good and faithful servants. You have been faithful with a few things. I will now put you in charge of many things. He added, come and let us celebrate. Then the last servant, who had been trusted with one talent, approached the master and accused him saying, you are a hard man to please. So in fear of you, I buried the money you gave me into the ground. Here is the one talent that belongs to you. The master was furious. You wicked and lazy servant, he said. I gave you an amount of property I knew you would be able to manage, but you did nothing with it. At least you could have put it in the bank to earn a small amount of interest. Now you will lose your talent to the servant who gained five. With that, the master took the only talent the servant had and cast him out of his household forever. Welcome, welcome back. We're glad that you got a chance to hang out and uh, check out this story on today, which is a pretty fantastic story that really tells us about how the father and really his love for all of his children. Because if you notice in this story, Olivia, um, it teaches us about a person, a man who was wealthy, who had a lot of bread, I mean, a lot of money, okay? And because he had all of that, he was give that and entrust that to his servants. Now, in the story, it never really says why he chose them, number one. Number two, it never says why he gave them the amount that he gave them. Nor does it say what he told them to do with it while he was gone. The only thing we know is that this, this master was generous. He gave, and it didn't say that these, these servants deserved it. He gave it. And it was an expectation that they were supposed to do something with him without him really saying. Nor did he tell them when he was coming back. Did he ever say when he's gonna come back? Okay, so when you think about this story, you think about this master who had all this wealth, who was willing to entrust this into his service. What, what, does, that, what does that tell you about the generosity of God? So, so again, in the story, wealthy man gives something away for his servants to, to do something with it. What does that tell you about God's generosity? Well, it tells me that um, basically um, God said that I, like, the 
man, the wealthy man um, had a lot of money, and he said, I'm going to give to these three men. And um, he basically gave to them because they were, like, they worked, but I don't know, like, why he gave them the amount of money. Right, right, right. And God is like, I can give my love to you. And in return, I just need you to like obey me and like basically do business. Yeah. <laughs> to do something with, with what he entrusted. Because I, and, I, and I love what you said that I mean, the kind of love that God has, and He gives it. I mean, He doesn't say, hey, you got to do X, Y, Z to get my love. He gives it in abundance, right? Um, and not only does he give love in abundance, but in the story it says talents, and back then that was actually money, okay? But just like we have now, we have talents and ability, right? But that don't just come from ourselves. We don't just born and wake up and say, man, you know what, I can really sing. I just, man, I, I, I want to sing, I want to sing, I want to sing, and it just have it doesn't work like that. God gives gives, he gives abilities, he gives talents, okay? So just like in this story, I mean, this master just gave it, right? Um, and it didn't say that they deserved it or they did anything uh, to, to, re to really earn it. The master just gave it, right? And God does the same thing with us. He just gives us gifts, gives us talents. Doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter how we behave. He just gives us talents. So Olivia, that you have talents a few a few that's pretty, pretty modest I, I like that I, I like that humble nature there that humble answer thank you great job so how well first of all what are your talents so that's number one what are your talents number two can you can you show us right now you know I'm not putting this slide <laughs> but first what, what are your talents that's the first question. Um, some of my talents are I can dance, sing, draw, color, basically the same thing, but I can also <laughs> paint. is kind of artsy, like dance, singing, drawing, I'm a really painting, crafty person. Crafty person, put some on that, okay? Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh, okay, nobody's going to on that, okay. But yes, and so how are you using those talents? Um, well, first of all, um, I'm using my talent of dance to like praise dance. All right, come on, come on. And um, I would um, sing like some gospel songs and like ever I want to. Okay, okay, come on that. So we gotta figure out how to incorporate the drawing, painting, and all that into that's your service, right? That's right. Um, if I can get canvas and like um, a, a paint board, then I can like on Sundays like paint what I'm thinking of, what the sermon means. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Because all of our gifts, it's not meant for us, it's meant for others, right? God gave us, gave you all those gifts, Olivia, so that it's not just we say, oh, I can dance, I can sing, I can, I can do all this artistic things, paint, draw, color, I can do all that, and, and you don't do it, okay? And that was one of the issues with the one servant he had, even though he just had the one talent, he did absolutely nothing with it, and the master was a little upset by his inability to do anything with that the master gave him. So God is looking at you and I, he's saying, what are you gonna do with what I, what I gave you? Are you gonna use that? And is it gonna earn more? Because those talents earn more talents, right? 
So one had five, you got 10. So, so your gifts are supposed to be to help multiply, meaning that more people should be blessed because of that and be a part of God's kingdom. Okay? Do it. Do it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for being with us on today. And I, and I hope that this lesson uh, on the talents spoke to you, that God is generous. He's given you all those gifts and abilities so that, you know, that God would be glorified and that his kingdom would expand. I mean, I love Olivia's uh, response. I mean, trying to think of ways where she can use her talents to glorify God uh, in dance and singing and painting, drawing and coloring. How can you use your gifts? That's our challenge. So parents, uh, in the, uh, we put a toolkit, a home toolkit for you, uh, built with uh, mazes, crossword puzzles, uh, word search, all of those things for you to spend time with your son and your daughter just to talk in more detail and share with them what your gifts and talents are. But then be ready to ask, answer, how are you using uh, those gifts and talents? So let, let me let us pray for you, and then we'll do this again next week. Cool. Cool. Okay, let's pray. Father, again, thank you for just a wonderful lesson and a wonderful, wonderful reminder, God, of uh, how we're supposed to use our gifts and our talents for your glory and to expand your kingdom. So, Father, we pray for those who are watching. God, would you strengthen them, give them wisdom on how to use their gifts and talents, give them the courage to do it, and we tell you thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, as we love to say around here, we love you. And same here, dear brother. All right. Bye, y'all.